Hi, this is Batma Priya, Assistant Professor of CSC Department in RMD Engineering College. Today, we are going to see the topic Framework for Network Design Decisions under the subject Supply Chain Management. The, uh, the goal of any supply chain network is to maximize the firm's profit while satisfying the customer needs in terms of demand and responsiveness. To design an effective network, it is a must that we need to consider this network design decisions framework. So this has been categorized into four categories, supply chain strategy, regional facility configuration, desirable sites and location choices. And under each and every phase, we are having some factors which is need to be considered for an effective network design decision. Now let us see these phases in detail. Phase one, define a supply chain strategy or design. The phase one objective is to define a firm's broad supply chain design. It starts with a clear definition of firm's competitive strategy as a set of customer needs that the supply chain aims to satisfy. The supply chain strategy also specifies what capabilities the supply chain network must have to support the competitive strategy. The next one, the next factor, the managers that need to forecast the likely evolution of global competition and whether these competitors in each market are going to be local players or global players. Managers must also identify the constraints that are, avail that are on available capital and whether growth will be accomplished by acquiring existing facilities or building new facilities, or by doing some partnership between the businesses. The phase two is define the regional facility configuration. The objective of the second phase of network design is to identify the regions where facilities will be located, their potential roles, and their approximate capacity. The phase two starts with a forecast of the demand by country or region. The forecast must include a measure of the size of the demand and a de determination of the homogeneity or variability of customer requirements across different regions. The next step is to identify whether the economies of scale or scope can play a significant role in reducing the cost with given available production technologies. If the economies of scale or scope are significant, it is better to have few facilities serving many markets. And if economies of scale or scope is not significant, it is better for each market to have its own facility. The next important thing the, we need to consider is to identify the demand risk exchange rate risk and political risk associated with each regional markets. It is also must that we need to identify the regional tariffs and any requirements for local production, tax incentives, and any export or import restrictions for each market. It is also must that we need to identify the competitors in each region and make a case whether a facility needs to be located close to or far from a competitor's facility. The phase three is to select a set of desirable potential sites. The objective of phase three is to select a set of desirable potential sites within each region where facilities are to be located. Hard infrastructure requirements and soft infrastructure requirements. So these are the two types of requirements based on which the desirable potential sites are going to be judged. 
hard infrastructure requirements include the availability of suppliers, transportation services, communication, utilities, and warehousing facilities. Whereas the soft infrastructure requirements include the availability of a skilled workforce, workforce turnover, and the community receptivity to business and industry. The fourth phase and the last phase for network designing is location choices. The objective of phase four is to select a precise location and capacity allocation for each facility. Thus, the network is designed to maximize the total profit, taking into account the expected margin and demand in each market, various logistics and facility costs, and the taxes and tariffs at each location. Thank you.